Neve, um, and I will say, Neve is not your real name. Um, we're going to ask you some very personal story, and I think for your comfort and just to make sure you're really relaxed about the whole thing, we've changed your name. Okay. I do know a little bit about you, and what I will say is, we know you're a guard. Yep. And you have had, let's say, a relationship with debt over the years. Do you want to just tell me in your own words what your relationship with debt has been and kind of give me a, an executive summary of where you started, how it accumulated and where you are now? Um, so I suppose my relationship with debt is probably the longest relationship I've, I've had. <laughs> um, it would have started when I was 20 years old. Started with a credit card. I was going on a big holiday, got a credit card just in case. I was going to be halfway around the world, just in case. Uh, my just in case ended up being a brand new iPhone okay. that I bought with that credit card. It then snowballed into, and I say snowballed because it went from zero to 100 very fast, uh, 15,000 euro of a car loan with five euro savings is all I needed to take out that money. So how much was on the credit card when you put the 15 grand on the car loan? 1,500, it was full. Okay, so was that 1,500? Yeah, okay. it was full. Um, yeah, so literally, I think I applied for the loan three o'clock on a Monday and I had the 15,000 euro in my bank account 9 a.m. Tuesday morning, just like that. And were you, you're back in Ireland at this stage? Or, I was, yeah. Yeah, you're back yeah. in Ireland and you're working away. And are you a guard at this stage? Are you working fully? I'm training. Training. So we would have been on less than the dole at the time. So 180 euro a week. And you got a 15 grand car loan. For a car. For my first ever car. When I had a and do you think permit. that was anything to do with the fact you were a guard? Well, I would have only got the amount I got on the rate that I got because it came from a guard credit union. Okay. It wasn't your normal credit union. It wasn't a bank. It was two designated guard credit unions that we had and one of them uh, was the one I went with. So Okay. So you have 1,500 euros and then you have 15 grand. Did it go further than that? It did. Uh, so I had been saving away in my credit union while I was in the college. Small amount, but enough to have a first month's deposit and rent for when I was stationed. I was going off the basis that I would probably be stationed in Dublin mm. and would probably have high rents. Okay. I didn't realise that I couldn't access that money when I had a loan. Okay. So I had about two grand there saved. For couldn't your deposit? For my and deposit, my first month's rent. Had to top up, had to take out a personal loan then to be able to then afford my first month's rent um, and the deposit for where I was going to be living. Okay. So. What I will say, just in defence, because they're not here, right? What I will say about credit, I'm a big, big fan of the credit unions, right? Um, what I will say about them is, is they still follow the same rules that everybody else follows. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And one of the things they do is they have a great relationship with the guards. So therefore, they, they, they understand the salaries and the pay scales and everything else. So I'm not going to, we're not going to put a whole pile of blame on them. No, I'm, no. And I'm going to be tough on you too, Neve. And I'm going to say that some of the, the responsibility ultimately falls with you, right? Okay, so sorry, but let's yeah. just make sure we don't get sued next week, right? <laughs> um, no, but I, in genuine, when I say it, the credit unions are something that I think the country needs and they do follow the rules and you were they were lending money to you within the rules. So let's just get that clear. Absolutely. Okay. It was my own naivety and having no experience of having money or having mm. debt before is what led me into this. It was easily accessible through the mm. credit union, but at the end of the day, it was my own Mm. I suppose stupidity at the time I was 20 and yeah. liked having money when I seen it in the bank and it, it's addictive So you got to Dublin you've got 15 grand and I don't know how far this story goes so, so yeah, let's it, it let, goes uh, <laughs> um, got to Dublin paying my rent after about a month the rent ended up being an extra 200 euro than what I what it originally was for various reasons um, so I found it very hard living day to day on the money that we were on uh, there was often days where I would eat three bowls of porridge in work because I got the milk from work oh, as part wow. of the social club. It was it was that tight with with the with the loans and uh, mm. that, that that I had at the time. Um, so the car that I had ended up crashing it. Had to buy another car, a lesser car. Now I I learned from not buying a brand new car for your first car. Um, had that car for a couple of years. Problems, 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 topping up constantly, just little bits here and there, but it all added up um, to fix the car. And then eventually one day there was just no fixing it. Another car again. Okay. Um, and I suppose I only kept paying my minimums. Yeah. Uh, the bare minimum that was required by the credit union, I was paying that. I wasn't, I was conscious enough of my future and where I'd need to be in three, mm. four, five years time. I wasn't saving um, I was probably spending a lot of money on food out. Interesting you say the food out because oftentimes, and just correct me if I'm wrong, oftentimes people are caught in this trap of I'm getting paid B 
big chunks of my money are going out on servicing these loans. And I deserve something because I've worked hard for the last month and you end up either topping up the credit card or borrowing again or doing silly stuff because you feel you deserve it. Is that fair? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Anytime the credit card came down, I'd say I'd paid three, four hundred off it. I'm like, you know what? That's fair play to me. I deserve something. Be it a takeaway or a new jacket, a new handbag. Mm. I just felt I deserved something. I felt like I had it tough and... Okay. Where did it peak out? What do you think you're... What what was the highest you got to in terms of personal debt? Probably not too much higher than what I am at now, I suppose. I'd say about 28,000. Okay. Um, that came when I decided to go back to college. I had left college to, to become a guard and always regretted not finishing my degree. And obviously, because of the money I made, I didn't qualify for any sort of grants or support. So full fees and everything I had to pay, didn't have the money for it. Took out a student loan. Okay. Um, so, yeah, once that went on top of that, the original 15 with the few top-ups, mm. I think there was a 3,000 euro top-up, there was a 5,000 euro top-up. Um, it, uh, yeah, it probably peaked about the 28, credit card all included thereabouts. Okay. And you're more or less still there now, are you? Uh, I'm about 20,000 now. So you've managed to go, you've really started to tackle it in the last couple of years or so. Yeah. The last year you've seen progress and you've gone from 28 to 20 grand. What did you yeah. change? I suppose I just started looking at my money before I got it every week. We get paid weekly. So I knew exactly every week how much I was going to get. The only, I suppose, variance would be once a month we get what we call a big check, which is all your overtime, your allowances mm. um, and things like that. So I sat down and just took it as if I was making the same for the four weeks. Okay. And... Gave all that money a job okay. as such. So I knew exactly what my rent was going to be. I knew exactly what my loan payments were going to be. Mm. Roughly knew my phone bill, my Netflix, things like mm. that. And I put all that money into Revolut Vaults. Mm. At the start of every week, I had a schedule so I didn't have to actively do anything. Every Thursday, it re it filled up and I knew I had the money there for all my bills. Brilliant. Whatever I had left over then, I took a portion of that into savings. Okay. Um, what I started to do as well was the actually the a great thing about the, the Garda Credit Unions is I can save they take money into my savings before I get paid it Yeah. so they take it from source so yeah. I'm I call it kind of passive savings I'm not actively doing it but it's tipping away there I don't see it I don't think about it I do forget it's there every so often What's really interesting about what you're describing is, is you, you automated it right so rather than you saying okay every month or every time I get paid mm. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do this, this and this. You just sat down once yeah. and said, this is what's going to happen every time I'm going to get paid. I'm yeah. not going to, I'm going to ignore, I, I get paid the same every week and this is or every two weeks or whatever it is. I'm getting paid the same pay packet. I'm not getting my big month or my big pay check each month. And these are the rules when I get paid. And then you automated it. So it just shot off into whether it's taken out of your wages before you see it by the credit union or it hit, hit, hit into your, your, in your case, Revolut and went off to the vaults. Yeah. And once that automation happened, it's, you've now taken control. Yeah. Is that what it felt like? It did, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did you feel when you started to take control and you started to see your 28 going to 20 and you started to see progress, was there less of an inclination for you to give yourself the handbag or the takeaway or anything else? Or had you allowed for that? Um, I probably had less of the inclination. I had allowed a small amount, probably a fraction of what I would have previously allowed myself. But once I started to see the savings building up, it really... Like I don't even, can't even describe the feeling, but as you said, like I had control of it. This was my money. Mm. It didn't have to go to the bank. It didn't have to go off a loan. It was mine. I could do what I wanted with it, but I wanted to keep it. Yeah. I wanted to save it. Um, even I, I, when I cleared my credit card there only in August, I, it, it nearly what actually pained. Like? It, it, it was painful because it came from the savings and I was like, but I've saved this money up. But it was there. I was able to pay it off and still have a chunk of savings. Yeah. But it was, it was parting with, because I paid it off in one. So it was the 1500 it was painful, but afterwards I was kind of like, yeah, I still have my savings. Mm. That's gone. I now have the extra money every month that would have gone on that, that I've added now into, we'll say to pay off less than the minimum of other loans. And that's the way I'm kind of trying to do it is once I pay one off, that money doesn't go to me, that goes to the other loans and to try and get it quicker than the well, minimums. What you're describing, Neve, is, is rather than your money controlling you, you controlled your money. Yeah. And you really just got stuck into it and said, right, I'm going to do a bit of hard work here, do all the heavy lifting here. I'm going to automate the hell out of it and I'm going to make progress slowly. You're also yeah. describing an emotional attachment to savings, which is something that happens. I've never had savings before. Now I have savings and I'm emotionally attached to this savings. And I'm, and that's where you can often get 
And it doesn't necessarily have to be a professional to sit down with you and say, right, this is the right way to do it. But there's lots of, like, that's one of the things that gets asked all the time, me on a Saturday on Instagram, or that's where some people get a lot of comfort from the books I've written, because you don't necessarily have to pay for advice, but you do need to make sure you make the right decisions. Because you can get to a stage where the savings become so emotionally attached that you are, um, you're inhibited by doing the right thing. And just be careful at that balance but you're 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 doing so well at the moment you've gone from 28 to 20 what's the future look like where are you going to next uh hopefully to at least 10 in the next 6 months well wow. um, yeah my to be fair my my partner he's been great with the separating me from my emotional attachment to my savings he's okay. kind of the the voice of reason um like no pay off your debts first yeah. you know the savings are there that they'll build back up and and things like that but yeah we I've done a out my little plan and and that so it's uh it's the goal anyway. If you could say something to somebody else who has started, who is at the very start of their journey, they're starting, they've just got the first credit card and they think it'd be grand and they're going to be okay. What would you say to them? Probably educate yourself. I hadn't a clue about money, interest rates, anything like that. I never did business studies in school. It was never, never something that really ever crossed my mind. Um, so I would say to anyone who's about to take out a loan, sit down and work out the numbers. Yeah, you say it's going to be 40 quid a week. Perfect. But then what if your insurance goes up mm. in two years' time? Because that was a big, actually, a big financial thing to me after I crashed my car. Yeah. My insurance went up to €3,000 a year. Yeah. Crazy money. But um, yeah, absolutely work out what it's going to be for the next couple of years, but also take into consideration that life happens. And that was one thing that I didn't take into consideration. And I tell you, life came at me very fast. <laughs> By about 21, 22 years of age, it came at me fast. Um. But yeah, just, just make sure you know what your interest rates are going to be. If it's better to pay a larger amount off at the start, you know, how interest rates work. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to figure that out, but I'm getting there. Mm. But yeah, absolutely. That would one piece of advice is, is just make sure you know the ins and outs of your loans, your conditions, your your terms of the loans. Um, because And when you say educate yourself, I'm absolutely going out the ledge here, right? Where, where is your best form? And I don't know the answer to this question. Where did you get most of your education from? Um, well, I'm, I'm going to say I'm, I'm not being paid for this comment, but it was actually from <laughs> your books. I, I will say they were not, not all the help, but fantastic I went there in help. purpose and the whole I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I did. Me personally, I found them great. Hmm. Um, and I've actually given them to a few people that I know that are an awful lot better at money than I am, but like that there's bits in it that they can take from it. I took something, they'll take something different. But uh, it was yourself, it was one or two kind of budgeting Instagram pages mm. I found great as well. Because um, I find they just, they lay, lay everything out in simple terms. Because mm. I find dealing with money quite overwhelming, talking about interest rates and principles and yeah. a, a lot of words that come at me and I I shy away from them because I don't know what they mean. Yeah, I like plain, simple language to tell me, right, it's going to be this amount for these few many weeks it'll go down like for example a credit card it's not the same payment all the time yeah um, that, so I think plain simple language was what I needed to find it took me a while to yeah. find it but it, it helped a lot let me just jump back a bit right mm -hmm. so I want you to remember when you were starting to accumulate the debt okay and at that moment where you're kind of going 1500 euro on the credit card I'm about to top it up by 15 grand was there any part of you said is this the right thing to do? Or was it, you know, I'm getting a shiny new car and like, well, new to you. Was there a moment where you kind of went, ooh, should I be doing this? No. Really? Yeah. I, I had it in my head that like that I wanted this car, I wanted to buy it, I was learning to drive. It was going to be a necessity for work. For work. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the year I bought and the make and model wasn't a necessity, but I thought, you know what, I'll take care of it. I'm, yeah. And then, so you're going to do that and you're okay. Did there come a point where you actually went, whoa, and maybe it was 12 months ago, but was there a point where you you just said, you know what, I have got myself in too deep here? Yeah, um, it probably would have came about a year or two, maybe about, about 22, like that, the insurance money every month, the loans. I think I was on the second car by this stage, so I had since topped up the car loan. And like that, paying rents, I ended up moving to a different location. So rents mm. had changed. And like that, just just struggling, just looking at your money every month and being like, can I afford to eat really? And that, that's how bad it got. I had a good job. I had a good pensionable job. Mm. And I was worried that I wasn't going to have enough to make it to the end of the week. And that's like, that's how bad it was for me. And was that your rock bottom? 
It was, but it took a while to be able to get back from that because like that, the, the bills don't stop. Yeah, it, it, did it take a while to get back? You, you knew you were at rock bottom, but then you stuck your head in the sand for a bit longer. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, pretty much. Um, like that, another bill would come up and I knew I didn't have the money there to pay it. So a small top up, a small top up. Um, and that I didn't uh, take out any further huge amounts of loans, but mm. it was all those top ups added up. Yes. And I thought, oh, it's only a grand. Sure, I'll have that paid off. But with next month's big check and sure. So because it wasn't the big 15 grand when it was a thousand euros, it was like, it's I'm easier. managing it. Yeah. I'm doing better. I'm I not, fe- yeah. I used to be crap and I took 15 grand loans out. Now I'm only taking 1500 euro loans. Look how much I've progressed type of a thing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I thought that the small amounts were going to be more manageable. But when you take out three or four small loans at two and three thousand each, so they add up. Yeah. How does it affect your mental health when you're in that state? How does it affect your decision making from a financial perspective? It's dark because you're. I'd be looking around at people kind of progressing and moving on and doing things and going on nice holidays or going on weekends away. And I just felt that I couldn't do that. And if I wanted to do that, I had to take out more money. I had to get the money from somewhere because I didn't have it because I had so much debt already. Mm. Um, so it was, it was just looking around at everyone. I suppose, and I, like people do that. And you know, they say you shouldn't compare yourself to everyone else, but it's hard. And I suppose the job I was in, age kind of difference was massive. Mm. So I was looking at people married with kids owning these lovely houses and I was there at 22 and I was like, well, they've got all this money and this nice things, but they were at a completely different stage of life than I was. I wasn't looking at other 22 year olds who were on an Erasmus, you know Mm. what I mean? I was working and living with people in their 30s and often in their 40s that... And I'd imagine, Neve, that there is a problem there where you're looking at, you're 22, you're a recently... um, graduated guard and you're looking at someone maybe 25 years ahead of you and you're saying you know what like we're more or less in the same pay scale I'm going to get to their point too and it doesn't really matter what I'm going to do today yeah no it, it is it's it's very easy to to compare like that but in reality they probably would have had let's say for example a wife on a, on a similar salary whereas mm. I didn't see that I was like sure they, they have these things why can't I as you said we're, we're on the same pay like yeah. why can't I'll I get there one it? day yeah and I thought I'd get there Yesterday. I wanted to be there yesterday. Describe to me the feeling you had when you, you you clear off a loan. What does it feel like when you do get to clear off a loan? And I I know you've got your savings there and there's an emotional attachment to yeah. the savings. But there has to be something good about clearing off a loan. There is. Like I did say like it, it pained me, but it's it's a good pain. It's it's a pain like I'm I'm letting go of something. I know there's still X amount there, but the load is getting lighter. Mm. It'll take a while. It's getting lighter. It's it's not going up. Mm. It's only going down. And that's, I suppose, a big thing for me is that like that while I'm taking, there are large chunks of money leaving me as such, but then I take a look at the overall number and I'm like, that's gone down a huge amount. And it is, it's... It's, it's interesting. Good. You use the word, it's going to take some time and you've accepted that. Oh and yeah, you know absolutely. That. And one yeah. of the things that people often forget is, is it, takes a while to get into that debt yeah. and it's going to take a while to get back out of it. And it is painful to be in debt and it's painful to get out of it, but you choose your pain. Yeah. And the reward at the end of it, like if you think about the, the moment you recognised, oh, actually I'm in trouble here, but just stuck your head in the sand for a while. Mm. That was you choosing your pain. And the pain was, I'll just top it up a little bit more and it might get better. I'll just top it up a little bit more and it might get better. But actually that pain has to come to a head at some stage and you go, you know what, I have to do something about this. And you've yeah. done it. Yeah. You must be, I know you've got, you've like you're a third of the way through your journey, right? The second two thirds is much easier than the first third was, okay? Because you've got the structure and everything in place. But you must be proud of yourself. To be honest, I am. Um, and I don't want to seem cocky saying that, but I like, I have done good, I feel. Mm. Do you know, I've, I've, as you said, I, I had my head buried in the sand for an awful long time. And I got out of it and I'm getting there and... As I said, it will take a long time, but I'm kind of, because I suppose it probably helps that there's so many little loans as such, because I feel like it's an achievement each time when I get rid of one, like one credit card gone. Mm-hmm. Like that was an achievement. It, it's I find it a little bit harder when the loan is so big. It feels never ending. Mm. But the, all the little ones clear on them, it feels, it's good every time. And I'm like, I'm looking at my apps and stuff and it's the list of loans is shortening on the screen even. Yeah. I don't need to scroll anymore to to, to see them all. <laughs> you know, it's it's... It's that, but it's it's the little victories and you kind of like, oh yeah, that, that was good, kind of well done. But you, you also don't want to cling to that too much because you're like, 
there's the fear that I'll slip back into it. Mm. Um, like that. While I am proud that I have done little bits, I, I don't want to give myself too much of a pat on the back because I'm like, you did get yourself here. You can go back. You don't want to. You're hopefully not going to. Mm. But I'm kind of cognizant of that as well, that that's always a risk in the background that something will prop up and I'll just dip that little bit. Yeah, it's interesting you describe that because there could be listeners who are looking, so you dug your hole, get yourself out of it. And how do you, why do you feel you're proud of getting yourself out of it? But still, you need to allow yourself to feel proud of it, right? You yeah. got yourself into a place where lots of people get themselves into and some people can't get themselves out of it and they struggle with it. But you, in your circumstance, have managed to find a way to get yourself out and you should be proud of that, okay? And I mean that. And you educated yourself and you got the knowledge you needed and you set up the structures and you've just stuck the head down and you're you're eight grand lighter in debt now than you were this time last year. And yeah. you're hoping to be 10 grand lighter in debt in it's, six months' time. Yeah. Six months, is that what we said? Thereabouts, yeah. So I'll have that much saved so it'll just be whether that goes off alone or towards yeah. the house it'll be I suppose I'll assess that in six months where I yeah. am Yeah. but uh, but yeah that's yeah. Uh, that's the goal anyway Neve, thank you very much for your time we really appreciate it thanks for sharing your story with us thanks for having me <laughs>